definitely not in Cedar Hill State Park anymore. All right, so I'm at Ray Roberts Lake State Park, Johnson Branch. Um, it's about 45 minutes from where I live. I'm gonna do a solo camping tonight. I'm gonna do like a Steve Wallace type thing. Been really into his videos lately, so got here super late, as you can see. It's 6.45, I got pulled over by one of the um, the workers here he had he had you know cop lights and everything because he I basically was showing up late didn't get a chance to sign in but anyways I'm gonna set up the tent and get a fire going got some firewood and stuff and I got some Frito chili pie that I'm gonna cook as well it's 41 degrees right now it's chilly and I think it's going down to the, I think it's gonna be like 32 in the morning. So it's gonna be chilly, but I got a bunch of firewood. So let's do it. Checking out the campsite. Shout out to Dave for this headlamp. I got this tiny GoPro light that I'm using. Um, that's it. I think I'm gonna set up, I think I'm gonna set up um, probably just next to the fire here because it's gonna get pretty cold. Right, ran into a bit of a problem. Um, so this is basically hard rock. So I'm just basically jerry-rigged using these pieces of wood that I'm definitely not going to use tonight because I got a bunch of wood. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to run out. It's 39 degrees. So it's time to start a fire. I'm freezing. Am I a glutton for punishment? Kind of. So I'm going to use... Every time we've actually gone camping, I've used a striker to start the fire. Either I have or Mike did another time. Got some pieces of paper. There's plenty of dry leaves everywhere, so I'm going to set up a time lapse and see how long it takes me that was actually pretty quick i think it was like five minutes but now it's kind of petering out Motherfucker. I had it. God damn it. I got this little... Got this little tiny ember that is the only thing that remains. I'm trying to... So smoky. and lost this flame so many times at this point. 
Everything's really damp. It just rained a day or two ago. And that's just making it that much harder. I've been at this for 20 minutes maybe. And I've had two or three flames that I've lost. So I started using some paper towels I have. Oh, man. Let's see if this goes. Shit, we got flame. Wow, wow, wow. Come on, baby. Here we go. Come on. This might be the one, boys and girls. Hell yeah, I think we're good. Oh my god. That was brutal. If ever there was a night where I was going to give up on the striker thing, it was tonight. It's freezing and that fire was just not wanting to get lit. It's still not too happy, so I'm gonna put this down and try and feed it. That was rough, but I think we're good. I'm proud of it. I know it's more of a pain in the ass to do it the old fashioned way, but it just feels good. There we go. We got it angry now. I don't know if you can hear that. Definitely not in Cedar Hill State Park anymore. That's loud, that's got to be coming across on audio. Yeah, just listen to that um, to make sure the audio came through. That is crystal clear and it, they are that close. They sound like they're right a couple hundred feet away. Better get the fire going. I mean, coyotes can't do anything to you, but they still, I mean, that's kind of a freaky sound. It's taken like everything I got to keep this fire going kind of petered out but there's enough of a bed of coals there's enough of a bed of coals 
that these leaves should just light up, but everything is so wet. It's crazy. Look at this. Come on. There we go. Touch and go with this fire. Ooh. about actually an hour after I started making the fire and it's just I think everything is so damp which is really not wanting to stay lit and it's 39 degrees out Whew, I don't know so if I thank Dave for the headlamp I would thank Sam for the knife this is actually the knife that he brought to the Franklin trip if you want to check out that video that's got like the most views of any video that I got but yeah this is the OG knife from that vid so shouts to Sam and Dave thanks guys so it looks like we got the fire mostly started feel relatively good about it. So, got a lot of stuff. Plan on the menu is Frito Chili Pie. Got this chili I've never had before from Aldi. Texas style chili. Should just be able to heat it up in the cast iron. Got some onions some cheese and some Fritos, so got everything I need. I'm just gonna start heating up the cast iron. So, chili's almost ready. Place unopened bag in boiling water. Heat for 10 to 15 minutes. So, that's almost ready. Frito chili pie because sometimes simple is best. Start with that. I'll go check on the chili. This is precarious but working. So you boil it in the water on top. We'll see. Like I said earlier, I got pulled over by, I guess it was a park ranger, but he told me that um, the water was out in this walnut campground in the park. So I don't have any running water, which is a bummer, but the first camp out that I did on that overlanding trip with Sam, we didn't have any running water there either. So. It's not a huge deal, but because there's no running water, it is empty over here. I mean, I have, there's a guy across the way I can hear, but other than that, it's pretty much a ghost town, which is kind of cool. Cedar Hill State Park is kind of, it's right off the freeway. It's like in Dallas County. So... This is definitely a different feel, but it's kind of what I was looking for. Kind of wanted to get out here. Get away from it all. It is dark though. Man, you can see the stars like nothing. We'll go check on the chili. I think we're getting close for sure. No joke, it is 36 degrees. I'm gonna go get the chili. I think it's warm enough. I'm calling it anyways. It's 
smells good. It's definitely hot too. It tastes really good actually. So, cheese. A little bit of onions, a little bit of bite. Taste the chili. It's not great chili, but it's probably like a buck fifty at Aldi, so I'm not gonna complain. It says Texas chili, which means there's no beans in it. On a cold night, it's pretty good. Basically, you got a wild hair, and just decided it'd be a fun weekend to go camping, so. Texted Dave and Mike, <clears throat> and they looked at the weather and they're like, "Nah, I'm good." So, it's, I'm not really the kind of guy who gets bothered by doing stuff alone. Like I'll, I go see movies and I'll eat in restaurants alone and stuff. I'm kind of a kind of weird like that, but I kind of didn't mind that nobody else wanted to come because I just wanted to sort of do a solo camping. I watch a lot of Steve Wallace videos and he's always going solo camping and so I thought I'd do like an homage to Steve Wallace's videos but other than the cold it's it's been nice but it, it's damn cold and it's going down to 28 and it's what is it now 36 degrees so it's colder than I thought it was going to be but got thermals on I got a sleeping bag, I got blankets, I got a secret weapon that Dave and Michelle gave me for Christmas. I might bust that out in a bit, but hanging in there, not too bad yet. So we'll see. Fire's kind of going out. Got to do something about it. In honor of Steve Wallace. Step two. Even though it's like step six, because I the tent up, I did all this other bullshit. <laughs> this is a LaCroix Tangerine, which is kind of a bummer. Normally, I would drink alcohol, but my wife is doing a dry January thing. We kind of did it last year, too, and so I'm pretty much joining her on that. Um, usually, when I go camping, I notice I drink a lot, but it's because... I don't have to drive anywhere. It's like the one time where it's safe to sort of let loose. You can, you just sort of hang out in your tent, you know, there's nothing really needed from you. But I think it's good to pump the brakes on drinking. It's not really a huge deal. I tend to sleep better when I don't drink, but you know, every now and then it's good to look at your relationship with any kind of crutch, you know, whether it's caffeine or nicotine or alcohol. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good thing, but I mean, I would definitely love a beer right now or some whiskey because it's so damn cold. But I'll make do. Additionally, my wife cut up some strawberries too. So I'm probably gonna eat a couple of these, maybe do a Jiffy Pop because I just love doing Jiffy Pop on a campfire. Maybe call it a night in an hour or so, but you know, I miss the alcohol, but it just makes me crave sugar. Like I wouldn't drink a lot, but it's funny how the body just becomes accustomed to having that extra sugar. So now I just crave candy and all that bad shit, but you know, try to get a hold on it, but a healthy alternative to all that candy and bullshit is definitely these strawberries, so thanks to my wife, but we'll see. It's a beautiful night. Thank God there's no wind. If there were wind, this would be miserable, because I couldn't hang. If it was like 30 degrees and windy, couldn't do it. Cheers, Steve Wallace. All right, 
ladies and gents. It's that time of the night. Jiffy pop time. It's like 10 o'clock, so hopefully I don't annoy our one neighbor. So cold. Whew. These are back. They can smell the popcorn. Oh shit, it's hot. That's awesome on a Freezing guys. Jiffy Pop has become a necessity for me camping. I don't think I've camped without it. Except for the first camp, I think I didn't bring it, but stuff's awesome. It's 1020 and it's chilly. It's cold. So it's time to break out the big guns. Tried to be a badass about it, but it's too damn cold. I mean, don't judge. It's freezing out here. Dave and Michelle got me this thing. I think they got it at Costco or Sam's Club. I wouldn't know what it was called, but it's got a little tag that's that says the comfy. I mean, it's definitely comfy. Oh, it's just getting to the point now where it's like, I'm probably just gonna get my sleeping bag because it's so damn cold, but this is really, really helping. It also occurred to me that there's no moon in the sky, so I think it's a new moon, and the stars are just super clear. I saw a big comet out of the corner of my eye about half an hour ago, but it's amazing stargazing. But with all the stuff that the government's announcing about UFOs and all that kind of stuff. It makes you think, like, if you, if I were to see some crazy shit out here and I was all alone, <laughs> I mean, like, nobody would believe you. But it is dead quiet out here. It is, it's insane. It's eerily quiet. Comfy for the win. Since this is a uh, an homage to Steve Wallace, I'm gonna do one of the tips that he talked about last week, and I'm gonna put the sleeping mat, this thing, inside of the sleeping bag. He said that he had a fan tell him to try this because it would cause everything to shift around less which is actually a problem I've noticed with this sleeping mat is it if I put the sleeping bag on top of it the sleeping bag tends to like slide on and off each side but I think that this way it'll keep it stationary you know so I won't I won't be sliding around as much plus it'll also add some insulation between the ground and me so I think it'll help keep me warm too. I might just sleep it in that comfy thing that Dave and Michelle got me. We'll see, maybe I'll try and sleep just like this first. Yeah, maybe I'll try like this. you can tell there is a frost over everything. Mm. 
basically giving up on sleeping. It's 7 a.m. and 27 degrees. It's just cold. Without this stupid comfy thing, I would have been screwed. This is in my tent. Gonna try and get this fire started. It's cold. It's cold. I was losing faith that this fire was gonna go, but I think we're just about there. Thought I might have to break out a match for a change. Cause it's 27 degrees. Come on. There we go, we got some flame down at the bottom. Thank God. I mean, everything's damp too. Like, my chair is just covered in frost. See that? Ooh, there we go. Just need to dry everything out. I've never been so happy <laughs> to see fire. I never. Thank God. Funny, I was sitting by the fire and I was so grateful to have the sun peeking out. I was thinking about how cold I was last night. And because of that, I started thinking about this explorer named Shackleton, who I believe was trying to be the first to make it to the South Pole. And I want to say it was the early 1900s, but regardless of when, he and his crew became encased in ice near Antarctica. I think they were like 16 miles off the coast of Antarctica, and they became encased in ice. And it was so long ago that I believe it was a wooden hulled ship, and the ice eventually crushed the ship and left the men stranded basically and I want to say they were stranded on Antarctica for a year <clears throat> they had to eat their dogs they had to basically just scrape by and after a year had passed I believe he and a couple of the crewmen got on this tiny boat I was boring my GoPro with the Shackleton story it's crazy, the cold really sucks out the battery. Crazy, it's so cold that my GoPro battery keeps dying. But anyways, after a year of being on an island, he took some of his crewmen. They got on this tiny skiff that they dragged, they had to drag across the ice. And I've been trying to take video with my GoPro, but it's so cold it keeps saying battery low and it, it shuts off. I think it's because of how fucking cold it is. But I'm going to have to use the iPhone for now, I guess. So Shackleton and a handful of his men get on their tiny skiff that they had to drag across the ice. Miles and miles across the ice in this terrain that just went up and down and it was just craggy and it had to be it had to be one of the most grueling journeys. And so they finally get to the ocean and he takes a handful of men in this tiny skiff and they navigate to this tiny island. They know that there's whalers on this island, but it's some incredible distance in one of like the harshest oceans in the world. And they make it to the island. They have to, you know, climb mountains to get to the other side of the island to find the whalers. He gets a whaling ship and he returns to get his men on Antarctica. And not one man died, which is unbelievable. Not one. So when you think about, you know, being cold or uncomfortable, I guess my mind just kind of went to that situation because you have to think like for a year that was just bitter cold 
they didn't have all this, you know, nice equipment. They didn't have, you know, they didn't have the best clothing. They just were roughing it. it shows though what humans can accomplish or what they can endure when they have to. But it definitely puts like one cold night of camping in perspective for sure. Check out the story though. The Shackleton story is amazing. Anybody that doubts how cold it is. But he's icing over. It's still like 27 or 28 degrees out. Thankfully the sun's out though. Crazy how sparkly the ice looks. I don't know if it's gonna come out in camera, but. I had cheese left over, so when in doubt, throw cheese on it. There's nothing that feels as good as a heater and a heated seat after camping. Well, actually that's not true. Probably a warm shower and or bath feel better, but I think I've reached my, I know where my line is now. And I think with the current gear that I have, the line is probably freezing. Like if I, if I, if I pee and I can see steam coming off my pee, that's probably too cold for me to go camping. Having said that though, if I had a couple more layers of warmth, I think I probably would have been better off. I ended up having to put on these flannel khakis at like 12.30 at night because I just, my lower body was having a really hard time warming up. So I had to do something. I, I had, this is all I had was was these flannel khakis that was the last layer I had for my lower body I wasn't I'm not Shackleton or anything it wasn't that big of a deal but um, it was a good time I think I'll probably do it again in the next month or two maybe I'll look for when it's slightly warmer or like I said maybe I'll get some gear that'll help keep me warm I gotta take the trash out one sec Had to toss the trash. Anyways, like I said, Frito chili pie wasn't that great. Um, had a hard time getting that chili hot enough. I probably should have just put it in a mug and heated it up that way. But it was still fun. It was still a good time. I've never been to this state park, so I'm glad that I got to check it out. I was texting Dave and he, he was talking about checking it out at some point. Um, but a lot of my recent fascination with camping and, I don't know, just kind of returning to kind of camping lifestyle has to do with the Steve Wallace video, YouTube videos that I stumbled upon a couple of months ago. I think I was recovering from my shoulder surgery and I stumbled upon them and they're really interesting in that they don't have any music generally. And he's just kind of, he's not the normal YouTube over actor. He's not like selling you stuff. He's not like this really ah, dramatic, crazy, over the top character, which is kind of cool. And I think that that's why he resonates with so many people. And so something about it just made me really want to get back into camping. And so I thought I would just do a video since I'm solo camping. He does a lot of solo camping and I said, you know, I'll just do this and it'll be like my homage or an ode to Steve Wallace because I've watched a bunch of his videos at this point and there's something about it that is just very calming and there's a lot of value in it for me and, I, and he has a lot of subscribers too. He's got like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So I think that for whatever reason, what he does speaks to people and it's kind of a low drama escape for a lot of people. And I think that that's 
a really great service that he does, you know. So that's kind of what I wanted to do for this video. Another reason why I, I'm doing like bare bones minimal editing is because I have so much shit that I'm editing right now. I have a camping trip that I went on with Mike and Dave that is like a half hour long and I, I've been painstakingly editing all this footage and stuff. I have another trip to Padre Island National Seashore with my sister and we're, we're basically testing out the four wheel drive of the TRD Pro that I'm driving. And then on top of that, I've got like campfire pizza that Mike and Dave and I cooked and um, you know, I'm editing that. So I just have so much content that I'm editing that I, there was real appeal to doing something like this where it's just really simple and there's just little to no, you know, serious editing going on. Because if you watch my other videos, I basically comb through a, a shit ton of footage and I try to kind of personalize it and stuff. And it just takes so much time. Like I'll sit down for three or four hours and I still won't be done with some videos. Like the Padre Island National Seashore one I've been working on for, I don't know, two weeks. I probably got like 15 hours into it or something. So I just kind of thought it would be cool to do that. Plus Steve Wallace, solo camping is kind of what he does. If you haven't seen Steve Wallace videos, you should check him out. He's a really interesting guy. He's all about bringing camping back to, you know, for the everyday man where, you know, you don't have to buy a big RV or expensive equipment. You don't have to start fire with, you know, a friction fire. Like he just, he's like camping can be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be and so I appreciate that about him how he he doesn't have this highfalutin idea about how camping should be and you know like what purists should do and all that kind of stuff I think he made it seem really accessible which is why it spoke to me and which is why I'm now camping so much more so anyways I'm glad you watched the video if you watch to this point you're like a real fan because I'm just like blathering on and on and on but it's about you know a youtube channel that i think is worth checking out um but yeah thank you for watching i'm so happy <laughs> that thank you david michelle again for giving me that comfy thing i was laughing at dave when he threw that on at the last camping trip we went but that saved me that saved me that little hood i could put over my head my face because I was getting really really cold on my face last night um I'm just so, I'm too tall to really fit in the sleeping bag all the ways where my head's actually disappeared that saved me for sure um but yeah thanks for watching and like I said I have a bunch of other content that I'm currently editing and working on so there's going to be a lot more to come um and if you do like the stuff that I edit and you want to see more of it, definitely like and subscribe and comment too if you have a question or if you have something that um, happens in the video that you want to know more about or even a piece of my equipment that you want to know more about, feel free to comment and I'd be more than happy to, to respond. But yeah, thanks for watching. You guys have a good day. Stay safe.